this week on Tech Wrap. Back to the Future, Hendo Hover develops the world's first real hoverboard. Apple profits jump thanks to the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. And a quick review of the Asus Transformer Book T100T. Hi, I'm Natasha Gutierrez, and this is TechRap. If you've seen the movie Back to the Future, then you're going to be excited about Hendo Hover's breakthrough. The world's first real hoverboard has just been developed by Hendo, and although it floats just an inch off the ground, there is no doubt it is indeed floating. What only existed in Hollywood science fiction is now a working, hovering reality. Forbes.com reports the technology was developed by architect Greg Henderson. He was looking for a way to create buildings that can withstand earthquakes and eventually came up with a way to separate the building from the ground using electromagnetic fields. Henderson later realized the technology can be used in transportation. And that's how the Hendo hoverboard was born. RT.com reports the hoverboard only operates in surfaces, not attracted to magnets, is noisy, and can only stay aloft for roughly seven minutes. The project is now in Kickstarter, and aims to raise $250,000 by December 2014 and hopes to deliver a product by October 15, 2015, the same date when Back to the Future's Marty McFly and Dr. Emmett Brown traveled to the future. Having trouble on whom to follow on Twitter's video-taking and sharing app Vine? Well, this latest update on its iOS app should help. Vine adds what it calls channels to its iOS app, making it easier for users to follow accounts based on the app's predetermined categories. For example, if you're into music, simply go to Explore and find the Music and Dance channel. There, you'll find a collection of various artists and everything else related to music and dance. If you want to add it to your feed, simply click the plus button on the top right-hand side of the screen. Not even hashtag Bengate could deter buyers from purchasing Apple's latest iPhones. The company reports its profit rose to $8.5 billion as revenues jumped to $42.1 billion in the fourth quarter. Apple's revenue was only $33.8 million in the same period in 2013. The company says it sold over $39 million in the quarter thanks to the September release of the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. The iPhone accounts for over $23 billion in revenue, over half of Apple's overall earnings per the quarter. Data from research firm GFK shows smartphones and phablet sales increased by 22% from September 2013 to August 2014. 6.73 million units were sold compared to 5.53 million units the same period a year ago. GFK Asia's account director says low-end models by new Chinese manufacturers make smartphones more affordable, making marketplace competition more intense. He adds budget smartphones are eating into the market share of major international brands like Apple. Chinese mobile phone manufacturer Gioni, makers of the world's slimmest smartphone, opens a concept store in the Philippines. Rodneil Catellas has more. Gioni is bringing its smartphones closer to potential buyers in Metro Manila as it opens its second store in the Philippines. The company showcases two phones, one for selfie takers, the other for movie lovers. First is the eLife E7 Mini. Equipped with a 30 megapixel rotating camera, you can easily flip the cam to take high resolution selfies. Its 4.7 inch EXO display also offers the LCD effect feature letting users adjust the warmth and saturation of the screen to their liking. The E7 Mini retails for 13,999 pesos or around $312. The other phone is the G-Pad G5, a 5.5-inch phablet that features a digital theater sound system and Yamaha PA dual speakers for a truly cinematic experience. It's perfect for movie lovers who like to watch their favorite flicks on their handsets. The G-Pad G5 sells for 9,499 pesos or roughly $212. Watch out for the full review on next week's Tech Wrap. 
Asus has been relentless in its pursuit for the perfect hybrid device. The Asus Transformer Book T100 gets a reboot and was launched in the Philippines back in August 2014. Aside from being available in three colors, the most significant update is its processor. The T100 is now powered by the Intel Z3775 with 2GB of RAM. It lets your device run multiple tasks without significantly slowing down. The tablet has a plastic build that's easy to smudge, but that makes it lighter making the tablet easy to hold even with just one hand. Holding the tablet vertically, at the top you'll find the power button. On the left side, you'll see the volume rockers and the Windows button that lets you shift from the traditional Windows desktop to its style view interface. On its right, you'll see the USB 3.0 port as well as a micro HDMI port perfect for hooking the device to a larger screen for movies, games, or presentations. Also on the right side is the micro SD card slot that supports up to 64GB of extra storage, expanding the tab that's built in 64GB of space. And speaking of additional space, the Chiclet keyboard adds 500GB of storage. What it doesn't do though is extend the tablet's battery life. Some of us may not be fans of Windows 8, but the Windows 8.1 running on the T100 was a little easier to figure out, thanks largely to the start button and the taskbar. One of the better features of Windows 8.1 is multi-window. The feature lets users run two apps at the same time and see both apps on the screen. You can even resize the windows of the open apps according to your preference. The T100 is also a decent media player. While the display and sound won't blow your mind, it does the job just fine. If you often find yourself out and about and need a gadget where you can be productive while on the go, the Asus Transformer Book T100 could be the right gadget for you. It is light, powerful enough to multitask, and the keyboard is easy to type on but it might take some getting used to if you're coming from a 14 inch laptop. At 23,995 pesos or roughly around $535, the Asus T100 offers productivity and portability at a reasonable price. Rodney Quiteles for TechRap. And that was TechRap. Follow Rappler on social media, join the conversation, send us email, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're still looking for the next TechRap anchor. If you think you have what it takes, join hashtag TechRap search. Links and details are on your screen. And that's all for this week, folks. I'm Natasha Garrett. Thanks for dropping by.